Okay, g'day all and welcome to another video. So uh, today I want to get started making our neural net library. Uh, this should be really good fun. Uh, but before we start, I wanted to say a, a few things. So for one thing, uh, some of the references that I would recommend uh, for this topic, some of the places where I've learned. Uh, number one, back propagation by uh, three blue, one brown. These videos on YouTube are absolutely excellent uh, for explaining how back propagation works. And the same with some of uh, the, the regression videos that uh, Mr. One Brown has put up. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to have a good background uh, knowledge on uh, exactly what the backpropagation algorithm is supposed to be doing and how it's supposed to work, uh, I think these videos are really, really good. Um, the Coursera course is really good as well. It's hosted by Andrew Ng. Uh, it does cost money to actually take the course, but really, really good stuff. Uh, I think it's mostly based on Python, um, but you know, in any uh, object-oriented language, you can sort of implement the same ideas. So really good stuff there. We're going to be changing a lot of the variable names and things like that, but uh, basically, I mean, the, the general idea is the same um, in the library that we're going to be building as it is in Python. So give those a watch if you really want. Uh, really good stuff. He's an excellent presenter, Mr. Andrew Ng. Uh, the other one, Michael Nielsen. This is just a fantastic website. So I'll link to all of these down below so that you can have a bit of a look yourself. Uh, Michael Nielsen's just written this, this paper just here, or this book really, How the Backpropagation Algorithm Works. This is absolutely excellent, excellent stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, Mr. Nielsen, if you ever watch this video, cheers, brass, you did a brilliant job. It's confusing stuff to implement because you've got all of these chain rules happening as you move backwards throughout the layers. Um, the effects of every little weight um, on the final answer is nothing but you know chain rule after chain rule after chain rule. So it can become really confusing uh, to visualize this stuff and understand how it works. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend this site here as, as a really good read if you want to know that sort of stuff. Okay, so that's three references that I personally would recommend uh, you have a bit of a squiz at if you're interested in uh, knowing how this stuff works. Okay, but back to our video. So I'm going to be putting the source code for the library as we build it up for the Patreons as a big thank you. I think it's, you know, it's uh, really, really good of them um, to support this video. So I have actually already programmed quite a large uh, amount of this library already just as a proof of concept. You know, I have to test things as well. And um, eventually what we're coding here will catch up to the other proof of concept library and we can join them all together into one. Um, that'll be less confusing for me. You know, it's easier to program things carefully when you're not on camera doing it live. Yeah, so I'll take a bit more care and I'll add a lot more comments, hopefully explaining what the code does. Uh, but mostly, mostly here in, in the videos, we'll just uh, recode um, that library. Okay, so in today's video, what I really wanted to do is just set out the structure of what we're after. Um, what I'd like to make, uh, I think optimally what we want is a neural net class just a class called something like a neural net or NN. We just want to say, this is your training set over here, Mr. Neural Net. Um, this is how many layers you've got, etc. Go for it. Yeah, I want it to be that simple. So the interface to it all, I just want to be a single class, um, just Neural Net. And uh, hopefully we can just specify the training set, maybe split it up into batches and things like that. Um, but then just say feed forward. Yeah, so really, really basic. Um, all right, well, I've got a new little class here. I've called it Neural Net Library. What I might do, first of all, is just change over to x64, since we're not interested in programming anything for Windows 3.1. <laughs> and I'll add a main file, um, just so that we can test things out. I might include a bit of IO stream or OI stream. And we'll int main. Um, return zero. I like to program uh, windows, front ends, um, forms and things like that. I like to use C sharp for that. Um, but what I tend to do if I've got to make a high performance library, like uh, I tend to make the library in console mode in uh, C++. So the reasoning here is that you, we're not actually building a console app. Yeah, we'll eventually develop this into say a DLL or maybe a statically linked library, something like that. Um, yeah, but we just use the console so that we can debug things while we develop. It's always best to use the the best tools that we have available for particular tasks. And uh, C Sharp, I find personally, is uh, really, really good for uh, front ends, windows and forms and buttons and things like that. 
Uh, whereas C++ is really, really good at number crunching. As is Assam. Um, okay, so here's our little file. Let me just hit save and we'll add the structure of our program today. So one thing that we're gonna need is uh, a neural net class. So we'll just right click and add another item. It's a header and I'll call it neural net. Pragma once. I might set up a namespace. So the lot STD, what the? <laughs> Uh, the library is called Grace AI. There's really no no particular reason behind that. It's just a it's just a pretty name. Uh, all right, but class neural net something like that. Um, okay, so we'll fill out a little bit of the structure of neural net in just a minute. But the neural net class itself is a bunch of layers. So we spoke about this last time. There's there's an input layer and there's a bunch of hidden layers and then there's an output layer. Uh, I will put a picture somewhere if I can figure out how to... Am I pointing to it? Um, I'll put a picture somewhere if I can figure out how to um, superimpose a picture of the class structure that we're making. Let me just right click and new item and we'll add our layer class. Layer. Name space Grace AI. And class layer. Okay, so the neural net class owns a bunch of layers and the layer class, uh, as we spoke about last time, is really just a collection of matrices so that we can perform these operations uh, really quickly, this forward prop and backward prop. We want to perform those lightning fast. So what we've got to also do is add a matrix class. I'll go add new item and it's a header and it's called matrix. Okay, name space, whoops, name space, race AI, and it's a class and it's called matrix. There, there might actually be another couple of classes for um, generating random numbers. I haven't decided how to do that yet. Maybe the Mersenne generator is very good. It's very good. Uh, and also some, some, some other uh, incidental tools that we might need. Yeah, so we might add a few other files to this, but... Okay, so for the neural net class, um, it's going to need a vector. Let's uh, include vector. And std vector. Layer star layers. Yeah, so mostly the neural net class itself will just be a wrapper for the layers. And uh, yeah, let's just include layers up here. Something like that. Uh, so another class that we'll need is uh, something to wrap the training set up in. So ultimately, I hope to just read this from a file. So you can just point it to a file with a binary or maybe text data. Yeah, but what we train the neural net on is uh, obviously important. So I might add another, another class called training set. Training set. Include. What are you including, mate? Grace AI instead. And then class training set. Um, okay, so those uh, so those four classes: the neural net class, the layer class, the matrix class, and the training set class. Those are the four main classes to our library. What I might do down here uh, in neural net is include a training set. And we'll say down here that there's a training set star and it's called training set. Um, okay, so we're going to have a constructor. Something like that. I'm going to be inlining a lot of things too. I just tend to inline stuff. I think it comes from C sharp really. Yeah, but maybe some of this stuff we might move over to a CPP file as well. I'm not really sure. Um, okay, so I like to set up a, a neural net with three values uh, int well this would be the uh, input neuron count so the training set batch size when we when we load in a training set of say a thousand examples um, when we push this through the neural net whilst we're training uh, we'll often like to batch that into smaller amounts say 10 samples at once or something like that yeah, so the training set batch size will uh, will be that value. 
and the output layer, whoops, the output neuron count. Yeah, something like that. Uh, we're also going to need a destructor for this, so neural net, something like that, a destructor. Uh, we're going to need add layer, and it's going to take int neuron count, uh, something like that. Yeah, so that we can add a layer to our neural net. One of the other things we need is uh, forward prop. Now you can say feed forward here. I'll just say forward prop. Okay, we're going to need a function that performs the forward prop, which is pushing the uh, data through from our input layer all the way to our output layer. And we're also going to need another magic function called back prop, which will be the uh, which will be the function that actually changes the weights so that our neural net actually learns something. Okay, so that's the basic structure just there uh, to our neural net library. Neural net library to our neural net class, sorry. So the layer class has a whole bunch of matrices. Let's go through these one at a time. Um, for a start, we better include matrix.h. Uh, okay, so matrix star activations. So the values in the neurons uh, after they've had the activation function applied are called the, the, the activations of the neurons. So that's what this matrix just here is going to represent. Um, we'll talk about the activation functions whilst we go. There's a, there's a couple that we get to choose from and we might actually do that with a function pointer or something like that, I guess. So sums, I guess. Um, when we are... Uh, so when we're computing the uh, activations, we actually need the dot product first. So we'll do that with a, with a matrix called sums. Um, we also need a matrix called weights. Uh, weights is the weights between this layer and the previous layer. So you can set this up in different ways. This is just how I've decided to do it to make things easy. And the other matrix that we need is biases. Bias. So during the back prop process, um, what happens is we have to compute how much we want to change each of the values in these matrices just here. And we can't apply that change whilst we're going because we need uh, the original values of the matrices. So really what we need to do is set up uh, another bunch of matrices, which are the deltas of all of these. They're the amount that we've computed to change the weights and the activations and things like that. So for each of these matrices, I might um, I might put down here delta and then the same thing. Yeah, so delta activations will be the change that we've computed in the activations. Delta sums will be the change that is to be applied to the sums. Uh, delta weights will be the changes that we're just about to make to the weights. And delta bias will be the change that we're just about to make to the bias. Yeah, so I hope that makes a bit of sense. It might seem a little bit strange, but um, yeah, we just got to make sure that we don't overwrite activations with um, the changes too soon because we might still need the activation values to compute uh, further in our backprop. Um, okay, so another couple of things that we'll need. Um, int n, the neuron count. I might say neuron count. Yeah, something like that. So a layer has some number of neurons and it needs to record that. Um, we've also got two pointers. A pointer to the previous layer. Next layer. Um, okay, so we're probably going to have a constructor in here. And that could take a neuron count. Might as well put that in now. This uh, neuron count equals neuron count. Uh, we're also going to have a destructor just so that we can get rid of all of these matrices. Um, so the way that we're doing it, we, we actually won't know the sizes of these matrices until we call um, set previous, I guess. Um, void set previous layer. And that can take a layer star. Previous layer. Okay, so once we've actually set the previous layer, when we call this function uh, from the neural net class, uh, it can actually set up the size of the weights matrices and things like that. And layers also need feed forward and back prop. Yeah, so the um, 
the neural net class, uh, the way that we're setting it up, can start the feed forward process and the back prop process. Uh, but the individual layers themselves are the things that actually compute the changes whilst we're doing the feed forward and the back prop. Yeah, so we'll set it up like that. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. That's uh, pretty much the structure of our layer class. So for, for our matrix class, I don't think I'll do much. I'll just, um, we'll just make a little start. Uh, I like to call it data. Although I've heard uh, a lot of people say that data is not a very good word because it's not descriptive. Elements, maybe we could call it. I don't think it makes a great deal of difference, but um, anyway. Rows and columns. So for our matrix class, we'll just make a little start, I guess. And uh, I'll add a constructor. When we get down to performance programming matrix product, I think um, that's really where all of the exciting stuff is going to happen. Uh, it's a ways off now. It's a ways off now. I've been working very hard on my uh, matrix product, but uh, it's still, you know, it's still quite a distance from MKL, uh, which is, I, I think, kind of the, the fastest of all the matrix products. But we'll, we'll see how we go. Uh, just get closer and closer to MKL until we've got some, you know, really, really decent performance. Uh, it's a lot of work and it's very, very difficult, but we're getting somewhere. Anyway, uh, rows and columns. And I'm going to say here that this rows equals that rows. And I'm going to say this columns because of the uh, this one here. And then I'm going to say that data equals new double. Actually, I also like to add another variable here, which is total. Okay, this total equals um, rows times columns. I'm kind of tempted to do something right now that... Mm, uh, I'm kind of tempted to do something right now that we will do later. Uh, for performance reasons, we might as well do it right now. So instead of calling new double, uh, what we're going to do is call aligned alloc. Now, new double can align things however it wants. It's probably com compiler specific. Uh, I think it aligns it to the data size boundary. Yeah, so for doubles, that would be aligned to eight bytes uh, since they're eight bytes wide. But uh, what we really want is uh, aligned malloc. And it's going to be size of double times total. And the alignment is 64. Um, so we will go through this in a lot more detail when we get down to performance programming our matrix product. But the reason that I'm doing this, uh, aligning it to 64 bytes, is because uh, we want to use AVX. Yeah, and AVX, for a lot of instructions, requires 64-byte uh, uh, alignment. That's also the size of the... Um... Yeah, sorry, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. Uh, AVX only requires 32-byte alignment, but that's the uh, size of the cache line. Uh, for the CPU. So we want to align things for AVX and we also want to align them for our cache uh, line size. At any rate, uh, that's something like that. And we also might add a destructor just while I'm here so that we don't forget. Um, uh, aligned free data. Uh, okay, so that's just a little start to our neural net library. Uh, hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully that makes a bit of a, a bit of sense where we're going. Um, I think just uh, ease of access to the interface is our objective here. Yeah, and hopefully if you're not a C++ programmer, you can still follow along fairly easily with you know basically any object-oriented uh, programming language. Uh, I did want to say if you can see any mistakes or if you've got any suggestions. Uh, I really encourage you to leave them down uh, below as a comment, uh, either on here or on Facebook or something like that. Uh, just because I think that together we can make uh, a better library than I ever could by myself. Yeah, I think it's going to be really, really solid. I think it's going to be really, really strong and really good fun too. Yeah, so if you've got any suggestions uh, or, 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 or ideas or if there's any bugs that you can see that I'm, I'm, I'm miscoding something, just give us a comment. Yeah, I'd be glad to hear from you. Uh, okay, so some ideas I was having for upcoming videos just before we leave. Uh, we're coming up to uh, a new version of C++. <laughs> C++ 20 is almost here. Uh, it's going to be a good time. 
Uh, but what I was thinking of doing is making a, uh, a little history, uh, just a little stroll down memory lane, um, going through uh, where C++ came from uh, all the way up to now, uh, C++ 20. And going to be a sort of a history lesson and uh, I guess just a demonstration of the mechanisms or a tutorial of the mechanisms in C++ in the order that they were added to the standard. Uh, it's interesting stuff to see uh, how we've come to uh, this marvelous C++ that we have today. And uh, eventually we'll start talking about spaceships and all sorts of good stuff that we've got in C++ 20. Uh, the other thing that I want to make uh, some videos on, I've been exploring an amazing language, uh, a fairly new language, I think it's about four years old. Uh, it's called Rust. Yeah, so it's a, it's a low level systems language, much like C++ and C. Uh, but really interesting ideas. So I think it would be really, really good fun uh, to take some time to uh, explore Rust and uh, yeah, see exactly what all the fuss is about. Uh, it's coming, I think. It's an amazing language. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, so those are some of the videos that we're going to be going through uh, fairly shortly. Uh, if you want to get behind what I'm doing here, you can jump over to uh, Facebook and say hello. You can jump over to Patreon and support the channel. Um, yeah, and other than that, I just want to say um, thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.